Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a DIY Dollar Tree Easy $3 iron looking wool medallion. And we're going to use some of this garden fence. You're going to need two of them for this size. And we're going to use this glass plate. This one is the small one, it's about six inches. But if you can't find it, if you could find this sun stepping stone might work, it would be very pretty. And if you can't find that, you want to make it even a little bigger, you want to try this um, silver trays that they have. This is the round one. You're going to need some black paint if you want it to look iron works or if you wanted to do it antique, you put white on top. And then you're going to need your cutting tools as well as your gluing stuff. Now I'm just using glue gun with um, Gorilla Glue Sticks, but if you want a more permanent thing or be outside, you want to use some E6000 or fix all adhesive. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to, going to paint this um, plate. Now besides making a mess, I'm trying to do this with all Dollar Tree products. So both the sponges and the paint, this craft paint was from the Dollar Tree. This is just temp paint, so this would not be good outside. But I want to let you guys know, after I was done with it all, I would really, had my druthers, I would take the thing out after I put it together and I would just hit it with some black spray paint from Walmart for 97 cents. But I wanted to show you guys um, that you can do this with paint, with craft paint, but just make sure that you know that it's just for inside use only. So when you're painting this plate, you want to pounce the sponge brush so that you can get in all of the sunbeams. I don't know how else to describe it. All of the rays, all of the cut glass looking divots. <laughs> so you want to pounce and make sure you get all the grooves in there as well. So I just want to let you guys know that um, I got inspiration for this for, um, from Emily from Mama from Scratch. And I'm going to link her channel down below. But she is awesome. She does hauls and she does home decor and lifestyle videos. She's so lovely. Um, she actually, this is a two-part inspiration. She actually was the first person that I saw to use these fences as wall decor. Now, um... That being said, she just used them like straight and painted them white. But on her wall, she actually has this medallion, um, this piece of artwork that she got at the thrift store. And I thought, wow, well, I can take that and make this. So um, there's a lot of different tips on how to take apart the um, fences. But I found out, I'll let you in on a secret. If you cut it from the backside, you could just use a regular scissor. Um, my regular scissor cut this perfectly. I didn't have to bend the legs. I, I don't have extra strong like grip muscles. You guys know I have arthritis in my hands. But I really did try from the front. I tried with my X-Acto knife and I tried with my craft blade. And then I ended up realizing that if I just turned it over, it cut so easily. I have no idea why. I'll be 100% honest with you. I have no idea why it's so much easier to cut this thing from the back. So if you guys know, let me know. <laughs> but that's what we're doing. What we're going to do is we're going to use um, two of these fences. And we're going to use the two end pieces on each fence. And we're going to keep them whole. Um, what I mean by that is they're going to have two full sides. Um, basically, the side that we just cut all of the um, pieces that attach the two fences together. Um, see there? Okay, um, so we're going to keep this hole on this makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to refer to them as two whole pieces and two half pieces. So from each fence, you're going to get two whole pieces and two half pieces. So I'm showing you here, this is just for demonstrative purpose, purposes. I'm showing you how you can get a whole fence on the side that's attached. And I'm just using my white chalk marker just to draw the lines to show you where um, you want to cut on the one side just to make sure that you cut the um, the whole fence as you know, it's I'm having such a hard time doing this voiceover. <laughs> but you guys know what I'm talking about. If you've seen anybody use these and do uh, DIYs, they usually have to cut down the middle of that and you get like a half of an upright. But what we're going to do is you're going to cut and I'm going to show you here again. You're going to cut all the way to one side of it so that the two pieces in the middle will not have any sides. That's the best way to say it. The two pieces on the outside will have two sides each, and the two pieces in the middle will have no sides when we're done. Okay? There you go. Now I've said it. 
<laughs> I know sometimes it's in my brain and it just doesn't come out of my mouth right. So I was saying that if you like that um, farmhouse appeal, a lot of people are painting these with uh, like a whitewash over them to give that farmhouse a feel. But you guys know that I do have some farmhouse, but mostly my home is French country and wrought iron um, and but even white wrought iron, um, white painted wrought iron is very popular in French country, but I really did like the black. I just really did like the black. I have two black um, metal candle holders that are very similar that I hung this between. It just looks so lovely. Um, I just really do like it. But um, what I was going to say was uh, I then take my craft knife and I clean up whatever didn't come up with the scissor so you'll see like it might be like a little bit over or a little bit extra of what was off the you know um off one of the swirls i just am trimming that up with my knife to make it look neat and it doesn't look 100 percent perfect but you can not tell when it's hanging up um you really can't um once it's put all together it looks really nice okay so then for the middle pieces we're gonna just make sure we keep those swirls intact those top swirls but again if you guys design this the way you want to design it if you want to use the bottom swirls as well um, I didn't um, of course you guys know me I design on the fly I have a vision and then I try to see if the vision works um, so I accidentally cut one of the top swirls off of that piece which ended up being okay because I ended up trimming off all of the swirls. I made it a lot narrower than it was, but you could have—I could have made it longer. Like that—that that could have been another design, um, you know, part of it. I could have left it much longer um, if I wouldn't have accidentally cut the swirl off. Um, but that would look lovely too. Okay, and then you're just going to repeat it with the other fence. I'm just repeating everything that I did. I flipped it over and I'm cutting off the pieces that attach it and you see how easy it is to cut with it flipped over it's so weird I don't know why that happens I know I know it's so strange um <laughs> but we cut off all three legs and now I'm going to show you here um in a second um up close that there are these little space of triangles on the bottom um, and I'll show you how you can use those triangle spaces to know which side of the fence to cut on. Um, I know that that sounds weird. Hold on. I think I can, you can visualize it better here. See that? See how there's like these triangle spaces? And if you cut on one side of the triangle space, you know that you're going to get a full side on your piece that's remaining. I don't know. I feel like I'm not making sense. Do you guys know if I'm making sense? If I'm making sense, leave me a thumbs up. <laughs> but what we're going to do is, with the two fences, we're going to get four double-sided si double sided pieces and four no-sided pieces. Now, like I said, the design that I had in mind was to emulate the wool medallion from uh, Mama from Scratch. And I really did love the way it looks on her in her house she actually bought it it was brown and like a resin kind and she bought it for twelve dollars at goodwill and painted it black herself but um i always wanted something that size so i can always add to this i can always get two more fences and add to this as if i wanted to um, but the next step we're going to do is we're going to lay it out and like i said i was designing this i had a vision in my head of what i wanted to do and i didn't know if it was going to work out so i'm kind of like designing it on the fly a little bit and actually I was kind of like "Ooh, could I make a cross that would be pretty too but it wasn't the look I was going for I was really going for something more round so um, I'm going to take the pieces that we cut off the no side pieces and I'm just laying them in now you see there if I would have left the swirls they would have been able to be a little longer if I didn't mess up so if you're going to do this and you leave the swirls on there you can actually pull make those a little bit longer but you see that? But I, I didn't mind it. I thought it looked really cute the way it was. I, it was kind of going with the vision that I had. Um, but what I did was I measured the one and then I used it to measure against the other ones. You know, because you want them all to be as uniform as possible. Now, one of the things I said in the beginning was you could make this bigger. You could make this with six double-sided pieces you could really even make it with eight double-sided pieces if you have a center piece that's big enough um, maybe you can paint one of those 
plastic platters or even um, a charger with the bumps on it and then maybe glue something in the center of the charger to make it look more medallion-ish. That would be pretty. Um, but just to give you an idea that you can, you know, double this, duplicate it. If you do that, then the spaces between the um, double-sided pieces will not be that right angle, 40, you know, that 90 degree right angle there. So you'll have to adjust the height of your um, no-sided pieces, if, I, if I'm making any sense. Um, but that's just, you know, like I said, if you, this is how you would do it if you wanted to do something a little bit bigger or a little bit different. Just options, lots of options out there. So what I'm doing is I'm laying them out and what I'm decided to do is once I get gluing, I'm going to do half and half. I'm going to glue two double-sided pieces and I'm going to use one of the um, no-sided pieces in the middle to, um, to attach them to and then I'm going to basically make both sides. However, when I moved the, when I went to go make the second double-sided Thing, I moved the camera and it was completely off the shot and I apologize for that so you're only going to see me put together one but they do go together the same way so um, now that I have all four cut I'm just doing their placement just looking to see if there could maybe be some more swirls added I don't know it's just more of the design process and I'm showing it you know you guys know I always love when I give you an idea and then you run with it and you make it your own. That is sort of like what I said the other day. One of my favorite things about doing this um, is to teach you guys and inspire you to do things that you love. So, all right. But now we're going to go ahead and we're going to put together the um, the one half of it, basically. So you're going to um, make these two at a right angle. And you're going to glue in the three points of the no-sided piece. We're going to do a dot of glue in the bottom, one on each side where it touches the fence. And we're going to put it underneath. Okay, and we're going to hold it there. You're going to hold it down. And then I'm not, sh I, I, edited the, I edited this for you watching me dry. I don't want to watch glue dry, but I held it there for about a minute. And now I'm going in and underneath it, because there's, can you see there's like channels in the wrought iron because it's kind of like hollow so I went and I shot glue underneath all the pieces just to give it some extra gluing and then when we're all done we're going to um, reinforce this even more with some glue at the end but you see what I did when I put the glue under there it actually loosened the glue that I had pr primarily put so you want to make sure that you let it cool completely before you add more all right so then after a while it dried it was just a, a minute or two but you really want to let it cool off enough that it's actually real tacky I mean real tacky right so it's not tacky anymore <laughs> and then you're just going to repeat that with the other side okay and all I did was I laid them on top to get the right the same um, dimension sort of like when we made the star out of the rulers and we just laid the pieces on top of the old pieces so we knew exactly where the placement was um, we're going to do the same thing and then I'm just taking the last two pieces and I'm gluing them in um, to the to the remaining joints and we're following the same procedure and I'm just holding it down tight until it really really is secure and like I said this whole project took me about an hour and a half with drying time of the plate and the glue but um, I edited it because you don't really want to see me sit there and hold glue to dry right I didn't think so so the only things I did cut out was how long I was holding the piece um, to hold you know to let the thing the 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 glue settle the glue set up excuse me and then we're going to go ahead and repeat it on the left side and this is where it's really going to get attached so you want to make sure you're, you're all squared up and I'm not I don't know if you can tell that I'm a little bit of a diamond shape but I'm going to work with that I didn't notice it until after I was done because I don't have obviously I'm not working from this top down angle you guys see that but I didn't um but once it's all held up and solid, um, I'm just playing with some different design ideas of while I'm waiting for it to dry. I'm taking like little pieces of the pieces that we cut off and little swirls and I'm showing you that if you don't have a center medallion, you could just add pieces of the fence that are in there just to 
just different ideas, you know. So you guys design your own, you know. I love that about you guys. So now once it's all cooled over, I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to really reinforce those seams. So now the the pieces with outsides we put underneath. So now they're on top. I know that sounds makes sense, right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to take hot glue and I'm going to go over each of the intersections like a bridge and um, I'll show you here up close see how I'm just going back and forth over the seam just creating a huge bridge of hot glue there we go and I'm just gonna let after I'm done doing this to all the joints I'm just gonna let it cool and this part I let cool for like enough time for me to go make a cup of coffee <laughs> Um, I was holding down the pieces initially so that they actually like were in the right spot. And the piece at the top, as you notice, isn't really in the right spot. It really like is hanging over, but it's okay because when we put the plate on, you're not really going to notice it. Um, so we're just going to do that to every one of the seams, okay? So now it's all dry. And... You can see, I won't, I won't, full disclosure, it has taken on sort of a diamond shape here. If I hold it square, you can see. It's sort of taken on a diamond shape. That's because I don't have an air, a surface to, to, my table isn't big enough to do the whole thing at one time. But had you done the whole thing at one time, you would see you'd be able to fix the squareness. But since we're going to cover it with this plate, which isn't dry just yet, but... I should not mess with it, right? I should just leave it and come back. Since we're going to cover it with this plate, as you can see, it doesn't really make much of a difference. So let's let that dry and we'll come back in a little while and finish it up. So while the plate dries, I wanted to pull out the silver platter to show you guys how much bigger it is from the space. I mean, you, you don't you lose those bottom swirls, but it is an option in case you can't find that little plate. And you can also layer it so this is the silver plate with the black plate on top of it then i turn the silver plate over and i put the black plate on top of it just to give you wanted something bigger um, and it was the same thing i was saying about a platter so if you did this on with one of those plastic melamine platters or a charger and you really put like six of these fence things around instead of the four that we have you could layer your medallion in the middle which would be so pretty um, of course, you would paint the silver thing black, but and the other thing is I, I wanted to do this all Dollar Tree stuff, like I said in the beginning, but I think if I had my druthers, I would have glued it all and taken it all outside and spray painted it black with the um, Walmart 97 cent um, spray paint because you can kind of tell here, the paint's not really 100% dry, but you can kind of tell here that the blacks aren't the exact same. The wrought iron of the fence is a little bit more on the gray side. And um, if you, after you glued it, if you went ahead and sprayed the whole thing black, that would be wonderful. Or, um, so what you see I did was I put the plate in the middle and I used the white chalk marker to mark around where the plate would need glue, basically. And then I glued inside the lines and I put the plate back down. And then I'm just going to let it go for a few minutes again. I'm just not going to touch it. I'm going to leave it. <laughs> Stop touching it. Stop touching it. Okay. And um, just seeing if I need to reinforce any of the, um, the, the uh, joints. The joints look like they're holding up pretty good. Let me see. Maybe this one? No. Okay. Well, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my craft knife and I'm going to clean up any overlap. So if you see there, there's, right there. A, there's a little piece of the fence from underneath and a little piece of glue that is just hanging over. And I'm using my utility craft knife from the Dollar Tree to go ahead and just use a sawing motion because you don't want to push hard. You don't want to use take your scissor out and cut it because then you might uh, detach the glue. But there's a couple of spots. It's really just that part and the part up at the top there that you can see um, that is overage, which is, might be something you might have to do just to clean it up if you want, okay? All right. And then after I'm done with all that and I feel like the plate is secure enough, um, I'm going to turn it over to attach a hanger. Now, 
I made sure that Jim and I, as we were working with it, I told him when he was hanging it up to make sure you always hold it by the plate because the plate is the weight. And, you know, otherwise you're just trying to carry the weight of the plate on all of those plastic things. And I don't know that that's really a great idea. So what I just did was I took my long pieces of jute. I took about 12 inches of jute and I folded it in half and I twisted it all up. Um, to get a nice a double six p a six inch double double loop, um, and I wanted to do this so it was just a little bit more sturdy than a piece of jute. That's the only reason. And then I did one of my little noose knots. I tied a little knot on the end, and um, I know you guys have seen this tons of times. <laughs> and then I've just put a huge amount of hot glue. Now again, this is Gorilla hot glue, so it does hold better to glass. Um, but this was the longest waiting process. I want to tell you, full disclosure, though this project was done an hour and a half, I didn't hang it till the next day. Um, just because I didn't have the opportunity to hang it. Like Jimmy, I wanted Jimmy to climb up on the couch and hang it. But um, it held wonderfully. Um, but I don't know if I would have rushed to, to hang it right away if that would have made a difference. Okay. So now that it's drying, I just wanted to point out that you always want to handle it by the plate. No matter what kind of glue you use, it's probably best to do that. It's probably best practice. And here's what it looks like now. In full disclosure, the wrought iron from the plastic is a little more gray than the black of the plate. But I still think it looks really good together. You can't really tell when you're far away, just when you're up close. And... um. You could finish this all different ways. So if you've seen people work with these fences on YouTube, um, there's Josie from Life at 50 Beyond and um, Emily from Mama from Scratch, plus many, many others. Um, they have put, you know, whitewash over them uh, to give them more of a farmhouse feel. I, of course, have a little bit more of a French country feel and I um, want to leave this black. So that's it. Also, if this is objectionable to you and it's really not objectionable to me I'll be honest with you all these little pieces of glue because like I said from far away this is not even that far away this is 18 inches you can't see them um, but up close you know you can the uh, white marker will wash away that's the washable chalk marker so you'll see there so that washes away so I'm not worried about that um, but um, if the glue is objectionable to you, then you want, you know, if you want to put a whole coat of black spray paint over it or even pick like one of those nice metal finishes if you're into like brushed, you know, oiled bronze or um, brushed nickel, you know, whatever your preference is, um, go for it. Okay. And I'd love to see what you do. So that's it, right. everybody. Thanks I hope for watching. you really enjoyed this tutorial. It was so much fun to do. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to share this video with friends and family. Anybody you know may be interested in making one of these. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. When you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And if you make one, don't forget to share with me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Tumblr, uh, Twitter, you name it, I'm there. Um, or you can email me a picture at mrsgarthb2 at gmail.com. And as always, take care. God bless. We'll see you next time. Bye.